Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It. Hi everybody, how's everyone doing? Today is Saturday, October 29th, 2022. Welcome to the show. So happy to be back, a new week. We have a lot going on with our breaking stories and what's trending in sports, NFL, MLB, and NBA. Also, we're going to talk about our business as we are creeping up to the holidays. And what are you doing? Are you making your products? Are you marketing? Let's talk about it. So with that, I don't own the rights to this music. This is coming to you live from XM Radio the groove so enjoy if you are celebrating a special event or a birthday turn up enjoy yourself get out there while the weather is still kind of good and have a good time welcome to the show everyone Uh, today as i said we're going to hop into our breaking stories we have a lot trending in our news And so with that, stay tuned and we'll be right back to get into our stories. Okay guys, so we are back with our breaking stories. And I heard a story this week about Norwalk, the city of Norwalk in California is uh, under a state of emergency as it relates to their homeless problem. And that is the first I'm ever hearing of a, a specific city is having a major problem with homelessness. Um, I don't know if you have been in LA or if you have driven down some of the major streets in LA, but there are a lot of homeless people that have camped out in campers and tents and the problem is growing. Um, I don't know what you know our politicians are gonna do about this but i've seen it you know i've seen it when i've gone to la certain parts of south central la and the whole street is just filled with homeless people and so it's really a sad situation Um, Again, like I said, I I don't know what is anybody doing about that. Um, uh, You know, people have lost their jobs, they lost their homes, things are super expensive. And so, you know, how are people supposed to survive? You know, that's, that's really, really a sad situation. So keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, for uh, stories related to homelessness and you can see how it is definitely growing Um, and two if you can donate or you know give someone food or you know try to help people as much as you can if we all try to do something we can at least help someone that particular day to feel better and to maybe you know change their direction um in other news gosh um nancy pelosi's husband was attacked in his home and it looks like he had a skull injury um from the assailant and so that's really terrible too it's like oh my gosh he's not even in the public eye but because people don't uh like nancy pelosi or whatever what she's doing you know they decide oh well they're gonna just go to her house and raid her home and that's awful um it's almost like a fear for other politicians to not run for office you know, for fear their their family members might 
be uh, in jeopardy. And it's like, what what is our world coming to? You know, what is our nation coming to? Um, of course, it's uh, voting time. So I'm sure you've received your booklets as well as your um, your voting forms. And so I encourage you to complete those and uh, mail them out, get them out. So that way you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the due date or any of that. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, hundreds of publishing staffers call for cancellation of Amy Comey, Coney Barrett's book deal. Apparently she wrote a book and um, people aren't happy with, you know, her, her book. And I guess it's very conservative content within the book. I haven't read it. Um, but it's interesting, you know, people write books and then all of a sudden somebody has a problem with it. Um, another story, um, family of financier of last U.S. slave ship breaks silence. And it's the descendants of the Alabama steamship owner responsible for illegally bringing 110 African captives to America aboard the last U.S. slave ship have ended generation. And um, let's see, it says um, that these descendants of Alabama steamship owner, they're responsible for bringing 110 African captives to America, the last slave ship have ended generations of public silence. So they've been silenced, this family, you know, the descendants of this family. So now they want to talk about it. And um, they're calling his actions, their uh, great, great grandfather's actions more than 160 years ago, evil and unforgivable. Wow. In a statement released to NBC News, members of Timothy Mayer's family, which is still prominent around Mobile, Alabama, said that what Mether did on the eve of the Civil War had consequences that have impacted generations of people our family has been silent for too long on this matter however we are hopeful that we the current generation of the mayor family can start a new chapter well praise god for that said this in the statement uh two members of the mayor family didn't respond to messages seeking additional comment on friday and this statement came amid the release of Descendant, a new documentary about people who were brought to the Uni United States aboard the slave ship Clotilda and their families. The film was acquired by Netflix and Higher Ground, the pr production company of Barack and Michelle Obama. So interesting. Uh, that's a really interesting story. And you know, it's, it's like you can't hold descendants of families accountable for what you know people did before they were born and, and it's unfortunate they just happen to be a family member of you know a historical um, event and they're not happy about it and, and i'm glad that they recognize that that was evil and unforgivable and and so it just in my opinion it shows that you know we are making change people are realizing that we all are people and nobody should be treated better or worse than the next person 
Um, we all deserve equal rights in this country and we all deserve to be able to make the money to, uh, you know, increase our empire to build our legacies. That is for everyone. That's what America is about, right? Land of the free. And so that's an interesting story that, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that they are speaking out because it shows change. So thank you to Michelle and Barack Obama for producing this documentary and, you know, just for opening up a door for this family to show some accountability. So that's a good thing. Uh, what else do we have in uh, breaking stories? There's been shootings going on. I know that there was a shooting this past week. I believe it was in Chicago. Um, please be careful out there when you're out and about. Um, people are very uh, just antsy and frustrated and you know there's a lot going on there's jobs there's gas issues there's you know high prices and food and so people are really really stressed out so with that in mind you know just try to keep it low stay mellow don't you know get into it with people um, what else do we have in our breaking stories? I'm looking, I don't see any, not too much going on. They're talking about COVID-19 symptoms that uh, no matter how many vaccine boosters you've had, um, you still have to be careful and um, you know, and, and, and eat right and take your vitamins and, you know, wear your mask because I don't know about you, but, you know, some people are still wearing masks. Some people aren't. Um, people are like coughing and sneezing and all of that. And I'm thinking, okay, we just went through a major uh, pandemic. And so if you got a cough or a sneeze, then by all means, wear a mask. Uh, you know, don't spread your germs around. You know, nobody wants to catch anything. And, and, and so we have this virus and also we have allergies that are popping in. I know my allergies were going nuts the past couple, three weeks. I was just, you know, sneezing and my nose was running my eyes were running so you have all of that and um you know just stay mindful keep yourself well take your vitamins do all of those things that you need to do to stay healthy um let's see what else do we have I don't see anything else that's really popping out. Of course, there's a, all that political news and all of that, but we're not going to go into that. I'm just going to say, vote. You know, that's your voice is voting. We have to vote no matter, you know, how uh, cumbersome it is. We need to do it. Um, if we want to see some type of change and voting the right people into office. So with that, we are going to move into our next step segment, and that is NFL. We'll be right back to talk about uh, what's happening in the NFL. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, so we are back with our NFL update. It is week eight. Wow, it's moving very fast. And I know you guys saw this game on Thursday night when the Buccaneers um, played uh, the Ravens. Oh, my goodness. Um, that was a good game. It was sad for Tom Brady because he hadn't lost 
three games in a row um, since, what was it, 2010? And uh, that was, that he was pretty upset about that. It looks like their offense needs to go back to the drawing board to figure some things out. And, you know, it's really sad. I mean, someone that's been playing football as long as Tom Brady has, of course, he's an expert at what he does. And it's unfortunate to see, you know, the team not coming together. Um, again, that was a good game. The Ravens won 27 to 22 that night. And that puts them at five and three. And uh, it puts the Buccaneers at three and five. And so that's, you know, not really good, but we'll see what happens in the coming weeks if they can get that together. On Sunday, we have the Broncos playing the Jaguars, the Panthers and the Falcons. Uh, the Bears and the Cowboys are playing at 10, and Dolphins and Lions are playing, and the Cardinals and Vikings are playing. So all of those are the morning games. Um, in addition, the Raiders are playing the Saints. That's going to be a good game. Uh, Patriots and Jets, Steelers and Eagles. That's going to be a good game. For our afternoon at one o'clock, we have the Titans and Texans. We have Commanders and Colts. The 49ers are playing the Rams, and that's going to be here at the SoFi Stadium. It's going to be a great game. Um, New York Giants and the Seahawks are playing. And for the late game on Sunday, it's going to be the Packers and the Bills. Um, Monday night, we have the Bengals and the Browns. So enjoy. It's going to be just uh, a load of good games on Sunday and Monday. So it'll be interesting. So let's let's look at the standings, uh, you know, who is where and, and what's going on. For our AFC uh, East, the Bills are number one at five and one. AFC North, the Ravens are number one. They're at five and three. AFC South, the Titans are number one, and they're at four and two. AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs are number one at five and two. We have the NFC East, the Eagles are number one at six and oh, get down. Um, NFC North, the Vikings are number one at five and one. And the NFC South, we have the Falcons are number one at three and four. NFC West, the uh, Seattle Seahawks are number one at four and three. So as you can see, it's starting to form. You can see which teams are sticking out. And we just have to, you know, watch and see for those that aren't doing so well, if they can win a couple games, you know, a lot goes into that. You have injuries, you have key players that, you know, possibly if they get injured, then that could affect a game. So we'll see what happens as this season progresses. So with that, we're going to move into our Major League Baseball, and let's see what's happening with the playoffs. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back with our Major League Baseball update, and we are in the World Series already. You know, baseball goes so fast because they have games like every day, and so... Um, Houston and Philly are in the World Series, so congratulations to them with game one yesterday. Um, let's see, what were those, uh, those scores yesterday? Um, 
the Astros beat Philly five to five to three in game one. Game two is actually today, so make sure you watch out for that. It's going to be an exciting series. Congratulations to all those teams that did make the playoff. I know that you worked very hard. And, you know, when it gets down to that, it's like your nerves are like crazy. So better luck next time. Just get back out there, work on your issues, and we'll see you next year. But with the World Series, it's always exciting because, you know, each game, it just gets... Uh, just more intense. So enjoy. Uh, we're going to move into our MBA segment and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we are back with our MBA update. And um, what's trending in NBA news? As far as the Lakers, they move Westbrook to bench a mint zero to four start uh, Russell Westbrook has not served in a reserve role in an NBA game since 2008 so what's going on with, with Russell Westbrook um, you know what I'm thinking about Russell is you know he and Kevin Durant they in their prime gave everything they had to OKC when they played for that team. And they wanted so bad to bring a championship to OKC. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. And so as you all know, then Kevin Durant left and he went to the Warriors and then he got his ring finally after all of those years. And then Kevin uh, Russell uh, Westbrook, then he left. And so now he's with the Lakers. It's like you finally made it to your dream team, but you are almost out of gas. And so uh, it, it's, it's sad because, you know, he really was a great player. This guy used to get triple doubles every game, but he was getting all that for the wrong team, for a team that wasn't going to get him that championship ring that he so desires. And so, you know, it's kind of sad. I hate to see that. I also think that kind of happened with Carmelo Anthony as well. You know, he, great player, great shooter. But then, yeah, by the time they get to the Lakers, it's like they don't have anything left. And so my thing is, why are we getting players, you know, we need veterans. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. But there has to be a contribution to the team on the court, you know. And so we're, I'm starting to see... Um, some issues with Russell, and I'm sure you are too. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, a lot of these play players that we have watched over the years, they're getting older. I mean, father time is kicking in, and so there's nothing you can do about that. You know, you have to accept it and, and move on and do what you can. Get out at a good time, you know, retire when when things are still kind of okay, not like get to a point where you can't perform anymore and then you're put on the bench. So interesting, interesting. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Damian Lillard is out for one to two weeks with a calf strain. And so he's another one, you know, a player, good player, but he's having some issues. Um, he's got a minor right calf strain and he'll be reevaluated in one to two weeks. Um, let's see, the Wizards, um, Wright, what's his name, Wright? 
he has a hamstring and he's out indefinitely and he's the Washington Wizards backup point guard appeared in four games a season before suffering his injury so that's really sad I mean four games and he's out indefinitely so um, you know uh, these sports can really um, take a toll on a person's body as we can see um what else what else is going on uh the games have been pretty good let's look at the um the standings um so far for the eastern eastern conference we have the milwaukee bucks at three and zero. atlanta hawks are four and one and uh, Toronto Raptors are three and two. 76ers are one and four. Wow, Orlando Magic one and five. The Western Conference, the Portland Trail Blazers are four and one. And uh, Minnesota Timberwolves are three and two. Oklahoma City Thunder is two and three. And the Clippers are two and three. You know, the Clippers looked pretty good. Um, I'm happy to see them play. I think they lost that game uh, that they played a few nights ago. Um, but you know what? They look pretty good. Um, between them and the Lakers, it's like, mm, I don't know. I love my Lakers forever. Um, but you can see when there's problems and issues. And so hopefully both teams can get it together, um, you know, as they, you know, evolve in the season. Because there's so many games. There's plenty of time to get it together, right? Uh, so with that... Uh, Stay tuned, and we're going to move into our uh, our business segment, and we're going to talk about, you know, holidays are coming up. Uh, if you are preparing products to sell for the holidays, you should be at least halfway with getting all of your projects completed. So stay tuned, we'll be right back and we'll jump into our business section. Okay guys, so we are back with our business section and uh, we're gonna talk about, you know, preparation for the holidays, you know, preparing your products um, getting them ready to sell, launching new products. You know, usually if you are a seasonal entrepreneur and you're selling items for the holidays, you probably have already completed all of the items that you're going to sell. Hopefully you are at that point or you're behind the eight ball and you're rushing to get things done. Because after um, Halloween, there's gonna be so many events and opportunities for you to sign up as a vendor and sell your products. The whole point is you wanna sell everything, right? You want to sell mostly all of your inventory so that you can start up again. So with that, check your local listings, usually um, your local city, um, clubs, and different establishments hold holiday uh, events where vendors can come in and sell their products. You want to look at these types of events because they are, in most cases, they're not expensive. And it's a good way for you to get out there and talk to people about your products and let people see your products and try them and all of that. You're building your network. You can also uh, network with other vendors and exchange 
um, ideas, exchange business cards. You know, sometimes you'll meet somebody and they know of another event that's happening. And then there you have something else booked. So the whole idea is that you want to fill up your weekends or your a day, let's say Saturdays of selling your items whatever day that works for you most times these types of uh, events are on the weekend they're saturday or sunday because people are out shopping and that's when they want to attract people to come and um, and purchase from the vendors so it's a good idea very good idea to link up with smaller venues like that where you can sell your products. Um, I know that when I have my clothing business, uh, I don't know, it's probably been about 20 years ago, uh, that was one of the main uh, entrepreneurial uh, things that we did, me and my partner, was we scouted uh events and vendor opportunities so that we can you know get our name out there and sell our merchandise and we met so many people doing that we met other vendors we met people the public um, we met celebrities that saw our products and bought things from us so it just grew and so i know that it works from personal experience and even today it still works so with that we are going to close off today you guys stay on your schedule stay on your grind being an entrepreneur is really a non-stop uh, it's it, it's it's a non-stop um what is the word i'm looking for quest is a it, you it's something that you will continue to do for as long as you have your business you're always talking to people about your business you're always marketing your business and so just because if you see someone that's selling the same item as you or similar item, it doesn't matter. It does not matter because your item is yours and how you market it is different than the other person. I mean, think about it. You can drive down the street and this is, I, I thought about this because I went to, I went to Walmart the other day I looked across the street there was one restaurant it's called Cane's they have really really good uh, chicken tenders great meal you, you get chicken tenders fries and um, some Texas toast it is awesome but right next door to it is Wingstop <laughs> and so I'm like you know what that's interesting I'm going to bring that up because Wingstop or Canes, they don't care. They're right next door to each other. They're both selling chicken. But it doesn't matter. People are going to both places, whether you go to Wingstop today or Canes tomorrow or vice versa. They're still, they both decided that we're going to be right next door to each other and we're still going to make money so my point is to you is that it doesn't matter if someone else is doing the same thing that you're doing um, because you will get that traffic um, just like they will get their traffic there is enough to go around for everyone so with that guys have a great, great rest of your Saturday and weekend, and we will see you next week on Let's Talk About It. Take care. Bye-bye.